Hello, my name is David Gear. Today we're having a look at the structure of the Earth. By the structure of the Earth, we mean what it looks like inside, its overall shape and what it's made of and how it behaves. If you were to view the planet from far out in space where you couldn't see any detail, it would appear blue. This is because it's mostly covered in water. As you come in closer, you would see the clouds and the land masses and you would start to think about, well, how is this coming about? Well, the structure of the Earth is not too much concerned with the clouds and the water. It is more concerned with the distribution of the continents and the ocean basins and with the internal structure of the Earth. Let's first have a look at the internal structure of the Earth. The Earth is made up of concentric spheres rather like an onion. So there are many different layers and this is a very simplified view in each, within each of these layers, particularly the mantle, there are other layers. And in this diagram the crust is shown much thicker than it actually is. The radius of the Earth is about 7,000 kilometers. That's the distance from the crust down to the center, about 7,000 kilometers. Now in that 7,000 kilometers only about 70 kilometers maximum the, is the thickness of the crust. So about one hundredth of the radius of the Earth is actually crust. So it is very, very thin compared to the rest of the Earth. Then we have the mantle. Now the mantle is the most... Now the mantle is the thickest layer and also one of the most important because the mantle is rather strange. It behaves like both a liquid and a solid. It's what we call plastic. That doesn't mean plastic like your milk bottles are made out of, but it means exactly that, that it behaves like a solid and a liquid. If you hit it with a hammer, it would shatter, and if you press it slowly, it would flow. Um, and you may be familiar, of course, with plasticine or Play-Doh, and they behave a bit like that. Then we have the outer core, which is completely liquid, very, very hot, and it's made up of iron and nickel, so it's molten iron and nickel. And then the inner core, where the pressure is so high that it's solid, and that's also iron and nickel. Now the role that these two play, without them, we wouldn't be here, because they generate a magnetic field. Uh, now the physics of that is quite complicated, and that magnetic field creates magnetic force lines out into space and they protect us from the cosmic rays that would destroy life on Earth if they were allowed to get through. Right, so that's a very brief summary of what happens on the internal structure of the Earth. Let's have a look now at the of the continents. Now about 250 million years ago the continents were all joined together in one massive supercontinent called Pangaea. And then they started to split apart. First it split into two sub-supercontinents, one made up of North America and Asia, and that one was known as Laurasia, and then a southern supercontinent made up of South America, Africa, India, notice where India was then, Antarctica and Australia. And they then started to split up, as I said, starting about 250 million years ago. This slide, in fact, shows how we know they were once joined together. Now, this is just one piece of evidence. There's a lot of geological evidence that tells us. The first most obvious one is that there's a match, particularly between the coast of South America and Africa and Antarctica and Australia. All of these places fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. And in fact, if we take the ocean away and we can see the edge of the continent more clearly, this fit is even better. Then the other evidence that is very clear is the fossil evidence. We find fossils from 200 million years ago that are found on both Africa and South America or in Africa, India and Antarctica or in South America and Southern Africa like that. And these are very distinct fossils and they couldn't have evolved on separate continents to be the same. So the continents must be joined together. And the other thing, of course, is that Antarctica we now know is completely covered in ice and is not really suitable for life. 
and so to find animals that were adapted to the tropics tells us that Antarctica was once a tropical place. About 250 million years ago we had Pangaea and then they split into Laurasia and Gondwana land, two supercontinents. 135 million years ago Africa and South America were well separated and just look at India. India set off about 200 million years ago and headed towards Asia. Look where it is there, 135 million years ago. And then today India has crashed into the Eurasian plate. And that collision has created the Himalayan mountains. So that tells us something very important. Where continents are colliding, we get mountains formed. Well, it's not only continents, it's actually what we call plates that the Earth's crust is divided into huge plates which are all moving relative to each other. Now Africa sits in the middle of a plate so nobody can collide with Africa and cause mountains. So there are no new fold mountains in Africa. But India crashing into Eurasia has caused the Himalayas. The African plate is pushing the Mediterranean into Europe creating the Alps. And then over here we have the Pacific Plate is crashing into North America creating the coast ranges and the Alaskan mountains. And then along the, this coast of South America, the, this plate here which is known as the Naxa Plate is crashing into South America creating the Andes Mountains. Now these plates have boundaries and the boundaries work in three different ways. The first way is that the boundaries can be spreading apart so new crust is being formed. So if you've got two continents splitting up and moving apart you can't just leave a big hole where they've split apart and what happens is that volcanoes fill in the gap and they create new crust as that happens. This is called a divergent plate boundary or a constructive plate boundary, meaning it's constructing new crust. Now what's interesting about that is that all the world's oceans are made of a new crust less than 200 million years old. Now the Earth is much, much, much older than that. It's nearly 4 billion years. That's 4,000 million years old. So these movements that we talk about, we've only got evidence of what's happened in the last 200 million years in front of us and we have to dig a lot deeper to find the older evidence. This here is a convergent plate boundary. Convergent means moving together and this is where the fold mountains are formed. When one plate crashes into another it's going to create mountain ranges and some very violent volcanoes. Then when the plates are moving sideways next to each other like that it's called a transform plate boundary. And we don't need to worry about why that is. And what's interesting about this is you will have heard of the San Andreas Fault in California, one of the most earthquake dangerous areas in the world, and they, they are on a transform plate boundary. Just to recap quickly, divergent moving apart is also called a constructive. Convergent moving together is also called a destructive. It's destroying plate as it goes. And then we have a transform plate boundary, which is also known as conservative. Conservative means keeping same things the same. So while the plates are moving, they're not creating new crust or adding new crust. Right, here we have a detailed map of these plate boundaries, and we've put in a little inset here so that you can refer to those plate boundaries. And let's start by looking at Africa. As I said, Africa is pretty much in the middle of a plate. Here, it's moving apart. So there's nowhere in Africa where the plates are moving together. So we have it pretty good as far as big earthquakes and dangerous volcanoes. Although the splitting going on here along the Red Sea, which extends into the African Great Lakes area, um, there are a lot of volcanoes, but we don't experience large earthquakes. Whereas if you look here, the Naxa plate is crashing into South America and so you have the Andes Mountains and in the Andes Mountains are not only fold mountains but some very very dangerous volcanoes. There is the San Andreas Fault where this is moving north 
and that's moving south and then there's some major volcanoes all the way around here where the um, plates are moving together so this plate moving the Pacific plate is moving north the North American plate moving south the Eurasian plate is moving into the Pacific plate and so on all the way around here there are lots of volcanoes and this zone is known as the Pacific Ring of Fire there are so many volcanoes all the way around the Pacific Ocean and um, great mountain chains being built in this area the mountain chains are only just starting so we see lots of islands which if you come back in a hundred million years time will be major mountains but at the moment lots of volcanic islands on this side though we have the coast ranges of North America and the Rocky Mountains which are far inland because they were formed many millions of years ago and then the Andes Mountains still being formed today and of course over here where India is crashing into Asia the Himalayas and where the African plate is crashing into Europe we have the Alps looking at the next slide which is a map of the volcanoes and earthquakes you'll see that they follow the plate boundaries along the mid-ocean ridges where the plates are spreading apart lots and lots of small earthquakes this map doesn't show the undersea volcanoes there are literally thousands of tiny little volcanoes as the plate spreads apart so lava comes up and fills the gap these lines of blue dots are where there are lots of earthquakes but we can also say there are thousands of volcanoes and that's where the seafloor is spreading these volcanoes here now you can see why it's called the Pacific Ring of Fire all the way around the Pacific Ocean there are convergent plate boundaries where the ocean plate is going underneath the continent and causing volcanoes and then of course where the African plate is going underneath Europe there are volcanoes you've heard of Etna and Vesuvius in Italy and then um, there's Mount Sinai and all of these are volcanic so there is a strong what we call correlation there's a strong agreement between where the plate boundaries are and where earthquakes and volcanoes happen you'll learn a lot more about that in grade 10 and the detail but right now we can see how the structure of the earth that plastic layer underneath in which there's a lot of movement in the mantle is pushing bits of crust around creating volcanoes and earthquakes and it all explains all the surface geology that is going on on the planet here we have a map showing the distribution of what are called hydrothermal vent fields now hydrothermal vent is like a small hot water volcano and as you can see again they are along the mid-ocean ridges so here we have again along that mid-ocean ridge not just volcanoes but lots and lots of hot water vents which are being caused by the new lava coming in along the plate boundary and of course where those plate boundaries are also under the sea there's a lot of friction which causes melting so we also get hot water vents along the destructive or convergent plate boundaries so it's a very very interesting thing going on we've got a very very active planet things are happening they of course happen very very slowly although volcanoes and earthquakes aren't slow but the movement of the crustal plates is about the same speed that your fingernails grow so you've got to hang around for a lot of millions of years before anything's moved any great distance.